Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to inspect my Marmot Tor 3 tent, a tent I purchased about 15 years ago. I used it a fair bit in the first two or three years, but then it has been in storage for maybe six, seven years and not much used since. However, um, I noticed some quality issues with the tent, so I further inspect that and do some repairs as well. So the Tor is a great tent. It's designed for extreme conditions like in the mountains with uh, strong wind and heavy rain. It has six poles so it uh, provides for a strong design but that comes with a weight penalty as well. It is, I think it weighs around the four and a half kilograms, maybe close to five with all the poles and the footprint as well. So when I took the tent out of the storage and inspected it, the inner tent looked really nice, almost looked like new, but the fly was in a bad state. The seal of the seams were completely deteriorated and the flakes of the sealant was covering the fly and the inner tent as well. So that needed to be yeah, replaced or redone. So I opted to make a mixture of sealant myself. I used this mineral uh, turpentine or spirits and mixed that with silicon, a clear sealant, silicon sealant. And I used a one on one ratio for the mixture and that worked really well. However, there was a bigger problem with the tent. So the Tor 3 comes with a clear window in the entrance of the tent, but that piece of plastic came completely out of the fly. You can see when it patches with the weights on top of it. So I had to find a way of fixing that. So what I did is I purchased from eBay a piece of tent material with a similar color as the tent, although I didn't mind the color at all. And I start sealing it to the fly. I used a seal grip to kind of attach it and I did uh, bit by bit. The problem is that the fly, you can see all the material is folded, which makes it very difficult to actually get a nice straight and flat seal with the um, patch. However, I did it bit by bit. I did maybe a 10, 15 centimeter section and let it dry for about a day and then I moved up until I sealed along all of the edges of the patch. It's probably not going to be pretty but it is expensive tent in Australia the tour retails for around a thousand dollars so it's worthwhile um, you're looking after tent and to repair it but I have to say though, in hindsight, so this is the three person version of the Marmot Tor. I probably should have bought this, the two person one. The three person is just a little bit too big. Uh, pack size is quite significant, which I will show in a moment. And yeah, there's a weight penalty of four and a half to close to five kilogram. And if you are by yourself, so you don't want to carry a tent around of that size and weight. It's good if you go on a trip with a you had two or three people so you can actually um, spread the weight so to speak. Well let's have a look at the back size. So the fly is the ground obviously. This is the back with the inner tent which has the size of a normal two person tent. Then there is a back with six poles and there is a f footprint and a small back with uh, tent packs that I don't have here on the ground but altogether it's in a substantial size but yeah it's expensive tent and I love the tent it's a really great product so I definitely want to make sure I can uh, keep on using it all right next this is what it looked like after about a week so as I was able to yeah get the patch in this is what it looks like from the other side and yeah, the cord is patching really well. So hopefully it holds up. All right, 
In this pack, I got my mom watch tour three, three person tent. And as you can see, it's a big tent, fairly heavy, four and a half to five kilograms. So it's not a tent you're going to take on on a solo trip. You really have to share the load with your mates. But I did some reparation on the tent, so I want to check it out if it's actually holding up. All right. Footprint, the bags, repair kit. In our tent. The fly that I repaired, hopefully. And the tent poles. So the so the Marmotor is actually designed for extreme conditions, mountaineering, could be used in extreme wind conditions. It has six poles, so extremely sturdy design, but also it makes it uh, fairly heavy. All right, let's uh, pitch it up. As you can see the inner tent looks actually really nice there's nothing wrong with it after all those years and it's quite spacious it has a lot of ventilation three significant sections in the, in the roof and a very wide opening as well which makes it uh, very easy to enter and to exit the tent even if you wear your boots and uh, some of the equipment it's very spacious, you can see a lot of storage, side pockets. I'm looking at the seals here, it's not too bad, but you can see obviously it's uh, slowly letting go, so I probably have to replace them at some stage. What I do like is all these reinforcement points, the black points, where the tension on the fabric is. It spreads out the tension to cross the seam, so it's actually really good. But yeah, very spacious tent, very good ventilation. You got all these hooks, so you can actually attach a torch or even a clothesline. Mama did something clever with the tent poles. Three of the poles have a bend in the lower section of the poles which gives the side wall of the tent in a little bit more vertical shape. Here you can see one of the pre-bent poles and another one and it stretches the tent out a little bit more so when you are 
laying toward the side of the tent, you will not touch the tent as much. Okay, I'm gonna put on the fly. You can see the stand has these plastic clips which allows you to put the fly on in windy conditions you just clip it in it's obviously not tight enough but now it will not fly away so it's really good This is what the tent looks like when it's pitched up and I still love the tent. I love this kind of shape and the patch doesn't look too bad either. And as I mentioned before I find it in a spacious tent and I look forward in using it again. You can see that the vestibule provides plenty of space to put at least two backpacks and some smaller equipment. It provides good shelter for rain and snow. And there is again the inner tent and you can see the nice shape. Now I use this opportunity to actually waterproof the fly. And I use two different products. This is an aerosol or a spray can, which turns out actually my favorite one. It seems to dry fairly quick. After about half an hour on the fly, it was touch dry. But I didn't have enough of it. I could do probably half of the fly and then I switched over to that second product. As I mentioned before, I ran out of the aerosol can, so I switched over to this solution, which is a silicon solution. Seems to work pretty well. The seams uh, soaked it in, but it is more watery, and it took way longer for it to dry. I actually end up taking the fly home separately and spread it out for it to dry for another full day before I packed it away. There you can see the milky silicon substance rolling down the fly. But yeah, happy with the result though that it's all nicely covered and hopefully it's waterproof. So that will be the next big test. I want to take it out and spend the night, maybe two nights in the tent. And hopefully with some mixed conditions so we can actually test if it's waterproof. I took the opportunity as well to, take, to check the base. Everything looked uh, good, there were no tears or any holes. No, the inner tent was in a very good state. Well guys, that is the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, have a similar tent or you had similar repairs done on the tent, maybe you got some tips that you could share with myself. I would like to hear from you otherwise I hope you give the thumbs up maybe you want to subscribe and I'll see you next time ciao